Welcome to the Virtual College Exploration for Missouri Students, sponsored by the Missouri Association for College Admission Counseling and StriveScan. Thank you for joining us. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your camera and microphone are off so the panelists cannot see or hear you. This is just one of many different sessions happening, so be sure to check out the full schedule at moacac.org. And this presentation is being recorded and will be available within about a week at that same website, moacac.org. And now I'll turn it over to our presenters. Awesome, thank you so much. Uh, my name is Heather Moser. I am an Assistant Director of Admission at CU Boulder uh, within our Office of Admission. Super excited to be here with you all this evening. Um, you know, I think the biggest thing is thank you so much for joining us. We're so grateful to be able to spend about an hour, or excuse me, 45 minutes, I promise, only 45 minutes um, with you all today, just to tell you a little bit more about Boulder. I am joined here by my colleague, Ryan, who is gonna introduce himself. Hi everyone, my name is Ryan Rothenberg. I'm an admission specialist here at the University of Colorado Boulder. Um, I actually graduated from CU this past May. I majored in operations and information management through our lead school of business. Um, I currently I get to work with our prospective students and help them really navigate this college admissions process, see what majors and if CU is the right fit for them. Um, and then along with that, I'm actually in Boulder right now. Um, Heather is not, but I am. Um, and, and so I get to be on campus every day, getting to see what everything's like. So if you have any questions about any of that throughout the presentation as well, feel free to put that in the Q&A. Yes, you're here uh, with, in good hands. We have a lot of good information to share with you. So I am just gonna go ahead and dive in. So a few really high level facts about CU Boulder really before I get into a lot more about the academics and admission process, uh, is just the fact that we are a large public tier one research university. We are one of only 36 U.S. public uh, res research institutions that are part um, of the Association of American Universities. So just a lot of information that I don't know that you all know necessarily what that means, but basically, you know, we're certainly proud to be the universe that we are. We are a large institution, as I said, so we've got about 29,500 undergraduates, give and take, um, every year, and then about roughly just under 6,000 graduates. Our student to faculty ratio is one um, student to every 18 faculty member. So it's important to know that you are going to have positive interactions with faculty as well as your peers in the classroom. We also have 85% of our classes that do have fewer than 50 students. So I always, you know, get that question about what is my classroom experience like? Am I going to be, you know, sitting in a lecture hall my whole experience? And that's certainly not the case where you do have opportunities to engage with both faculty and uh, your peers in the classroom. I'm gonna talk a little bit about academics, but we do have eight colleges, schools, and programs for you to choose from that you'll apply directly into. There are so many different courses in which you can choose from when you are considering both your major and then also different ways to customize your education. And then of course, so many clubs and organizations on campus as well that you can join and be part of. CU Boulder, um, as I mentioned, is you know, a prestigious public, prestigious public institution. And again, we are really proud to be that. We're proud to be known by many um, different people as well as have an amazing large alumni network um, just around both the United States and the world. I also love this slide because I think in this virtual space, it does give you a look at kind of what campus looks like a little bit up close just in terms of the architecture. You can see beautiful buildings as well as the mountains behind. Um, right by campus. I often get asked, you know, um, from students who are kind of asking, what is the vibe around campus? Um, what do you look for in students? And I think that this also speaks really nicely to that where you, we are really looking for students who want to change the world and make an impact on the world while using their CU Boulder education. Um, you know, it is certainly something where you can find opportunities both in entrepreneurship, in research, also just with the sustainability mindset that Boulder has as well. So you dirt, certainly, as I mentioned, have so many ways in which you can kind of like take this concept, but noting that, you know, you will definitely be in good company if you are a student that does wanna make an impact on the world. And then also here, another great look, just kind of at um, the area around Boulder. This is Pearl Street Mall, which is uh, a really fun spot for students to go hang out as well as visitors to spend some time as well. Um, but you know, the things that I think are really cool is that we are the number one college town in the US. We're also ranked up there in one of the happiest cities um, in America as well as the nation as well. So we are both looking at an innovative city and a space that you can certainly enjoy for your um, many years on campus. 
my goal of this presentation really is to get you to start thinking about the things you're interested in, the things you love, and try to figure out how that can really shape and mold your experience at CU Boulder. Um, we want you to know that there are so many amazing opportunities, both academically and outside the classroom that we'll touch on. But looking just in terms of classroom learning, as I mentioned, you're not going to spend your whole time in lecture halls. We have so many interactive seminar opportunities, opportunities for cross-disciplinary study, and so on. We are a tier one research institution, which means that you have amazing opportunities to do research as an undergraduate student, both in labs with your faculty members, but also with our undergraduate research office. So definitely keep that in mind if you are a student interested in being involved in research. And then now I'm going to pass it over to Ryan to share a little bit about global opportunities at CU Boulder. Yeah, there really are so many different global experiences you can have while here at CU that you can really take that classroom learning, the experience you've gotten around Boulder, and take that and go abroad with it. Um, whether you're interested in a semester long typical study abroad program where you really immerse yourself in the culture for six months, or if you want to maybe do something a little different. CU offers a number of different classes you can take that include a international component to them. Um, a lot of classes that you might take over the May semester, um, which is from the end of the spring semester in May up until about the beginning of June, a lot of those classes will be completely abroad, where you can take a class through CU in a different country. Um, along with that, a number of classes go abroad over spring break. Um, that's something I participated in my freshman year here at CU. I was a part of a class called First Year Global Experience, where we looked at the travel and tourism industry of France and then traveled over to Paris during spring break my freshman year. Uh, we met with various business leaders over there and we really applied what we had learned in the classroom to that real world international setting. Um, so a really great experience and something that so many different colleges, schools and programs on our campus have to offer. Awesome. So talking even more about academics, I did mention that we have eight different colleges, schools, and programs you can choose from with over 110 majors. So you will apply directly into a college, a major or program of your choice. We also have minors, concurrent degree programs, and certificates. So really looking at this slide, what's important to take away is the fact that you're going to have the opportunity to customize your education and really make it um, you know, special for you. I feel like no two students leave looking the exact same in terms of their academic experience. Minors and certificates are just a really positive way for you to um, make yourself more well-rounded and really dive into some of those areas that you might be interested in beyond just your major. And then just to touch on concurrent bachelor master's programs, basically uh, you could receive your master's and bachelor's in five years. You would basically just begin your master's program while you are completing your undergraduate degree and then be able to graduate with that altogether. Talking a little bit about our specific academic program. So we do have the College of Arts and Sciences. This is our largest college on campus. It has about 50 majors within it um, for you to choose from. And this is really the space where you see a lot of cross-disciplinary study. Within uh, this college, you're going to find the arts and humanities. So those are majors like art history, cinema studies, Spanish theater. You'll also have the natural sciences, which is chemistry, geology, environmental studies, and then social sciences, like political science and sociology. Uh, we also have our pre-health uh, advising found within this college as well. So if you are interested in something like pre-med or pre-physician's assistant, pre-dental, those sorts of things, you would go through an advising program while still choosing a primary major that best fits kind of your interests and what will um, help you in the long run for your career. The College of Engineering and Applied Sciences, this is a home to our engineering students. So you have majors ranging really anywhere from mechanical engineering to environmental engineering to aerospace engineering, but you don't need to know exactly what type of engineering you want to do at the time of applying, though you certainly can apply directly into a specific major. Right, right away when you get uh, to CU Boulder for the College of Engineering, you will take um, a course that basically introduces you to many different areas of uh, engineering specifically, which will give you an opportunity to really see what is a good fit for you. This is one of our top ring programs. Uh, it is one of the top in the mountain time and really a large part of that is because of its customizable and hands-on approach that really gives students the opportunity to take advantage of everything the engineering program can offer, but also everything outside of that. So you really do end up leaving very well-rounded with a good positive experience. I'm gonna save the lead school business till the very end. 
The School of Education is home to our future teachers. So this is uh, an elementary education major, and then also the option to complete a teacher licensure program for secondary education. And then there's also a really cool leadership and community engagement major that you can study as well. This, you know, I feel like all of us really love being able to talk about the School of Education because it is areas that we're so passionate about. The school really focuses on preparing students to be future educators. There's a strong focus on the public policy and really like how that relates to community and how um, valuing equity, diversity, and justice within the program can really make a difference. So that is part of the curriculum. It's a dynamic and really close-knit community and very well-resourced in terms of having staff and faculty available to be mentors and um, you know, just helpful aids to students. The College of Media Communication and Information, or CMCI, like we like to call it, just because it's a little bit easier, is going to be home to our students in journalism, media production, communication, information science, really anything within that type of um, area. And so these students have amazing network opportunities, as well as opportunities to be involved specifically in the areas that they're looking uh, to study and do as a career. You're going to gain really great experience both through coursework that's adaptable uh, because they know that communication is always changing and always adapting. They do make sure that the curriculum is um, reflective of that and then also you know internships and resources on campus um, like for example a news broadcasting studio or even a podcast studio as well. So a lot of really hands-on training happens within there. The College of Music. This is conservatory style program. So this is home to our music students. Keep in mind, there is an additional audition process required to be part of this college. Um, and for this year, that will be a virtual opportunity. And within this college as well, students are um, going to receive either a Bachelor of Arts or a Bachelor of Fine Arts degree, depending on the specific instrument and area in which you're studying. Oftentimes we do see these students go directly into the field or will go to grad school for some element of music, but it certainly is a very technical type program, which gives you great experience that is very relevant to the field. And then program in, in environmental design. So this is home to students in architecture, sustainable planning, landscape architecture, that sort of thing. These students are gonna spend a good bit of their time uh, in the studio. Studio classes are only 12 to 16 students. So that's a really small group of students who can work together um, both creatively and just on projects as well. Um, the I think best thing too is that you get to sample all different majors before needing to declare your major. So there is a lot of different things here. And I think sometimes areas that you might not even know that you're great at or that you love. And so that is a really great opportunity to dive a little bit deeper and noting that there is no portfolio required to apply for this design program. And then I'm going to pass it over to Ryan to touch on business. Yeah, so the Lead School of Business is um, one of the oldest business schools in the country and is also one of the most widely recognized here in the state of Colorado. Um, with, through the program, you're going to get a degree, which is a Bachelor's of Science in Business Administration. But within there, you really get to pick your area of study. So starting your first two years, um, you'll really take some general business classes, learn about the world of business, you'll take some statistics courses, and then you'll take what's called the MODS and the B Core Applied Semester Experience, um, the Business Core. Um, and through all of that, LEADS' goal is for you to better understand each of the five areas of emphasis that you'll eventually declare. So those are marketing, management, accounting, finance, and real estate. So basically through those first two years, you're gonna see what you like, what you don't like. And then come the end of your sophomore year, you get to pick one of those to really further your study in. And that's ultimately what you'll major in. Um, so one of the really neat things with that is you can learn, I love, like for me, I loved management. I found it really interesting. I loved the classes. I took accounting, not so much, really didn't like it. Um, so that's one of the great things about Leeds is they really set you up to get an experience in a little bit of everything so that when you make that decision on what you ultimately want to pursue your degree in, you're really, you have a well-rounded understanding of all of the different kinds of facets of business. One of the other really neat things that Leeds is able to offer is our mentoring program. Your first year at the Leeds School of Business, you'll be partnered with a mentor in their junior or senior year of college. Um, starting your sophomore year, you'll be a part of our Young Alumni Mentor Program, or YAMS, as we like to call it, where you're partnered up with an industry professional that has five years or less of experience in their field. After that, for your junior and senior year here at Leeds, 
um, you'll be able to be partnered with a professional mentor um, through our professional mentorship program. Um, through that, you'll be partnered with an industry professional that has 10 years or more experience in their area of study um, and is something that you might be interested in as well. Um, for me, I was partnered up with a, a gentleman who works for the Walt Disney Company in IT out in Burbank. Um, I've always been passionate about working for Disney and through that he was able to help me kind of explore the different areas within the company. Um, also wrote me a letter of recommendation for an internship I was able to take a part in this past fall down at Walt Disney World. So really through that they're setting you up for success from day one through those mentorship programs, helping you get those real world experiences, make those connections and ultimately get your foot in the door so that you can be as successful as you can be once you graduate. Awesome. And Ryan, I love that you touched on your internship experience too. And I think we talk about that a little bit later on as well, but um, even kind of noting and going off of that, every college and program at CU has great connections and also has a professional development team and people who are going to help you find jobs as well. So that's definitely something you can be confident about um, moving forward. In addition to all of these different um, academic areas, we also have our program and exploratory studies, which is basically our undecided option. As a student, you know, if you come in, you're not quite sure exactly what um, major you wanna study or you kinda know what career you wanna do, but you're not quite sure how to get there, this is gonna be a great option for you. You can apply directly into this program. You will have one year of very intentional advising to make sure that they can kinda get you in the right area in which you are hoping to study and are passionate about. A question I always get is, am I able to graduate in four years still if I do program exploratory studies? And you absolutely are. That is why we have such intentional advising who are gonna help uh, set you up for success um, in choosing your major. I also, before I continue on, wanna put a plug in um, to utilize that question and answer um, section as well. We will certainly be able to answer those questions towards the end or during the presentation if they're relevant to the section we're mentioning. So now to talk a little bit more about all of the other things that are not academic. So I talked a lot about academics, so did Ryan, um, and they're important. They're absolutely so important, but so is balance. And so we really want um, you to know that your experience is about so much more than just going to class and studying the whole time. We really want you um, to find that balance and that healthy work-life balance between, you know, going outside and being involved in clubs and organizations and that sort of thing. This is also ways that you start to make a big university feel a little bit smaller. So the first place we really do that and begin your first like kind of look into student experience is uh, through the residential, residential life. And so you will um, be required to live on campus in your first year, that is part of our requirement. And you have so many different dorms to choose from. About 50% of our students are gonna go into a traditional residential experience, and the other 50% are gonna live in our specialized housing. So I'm gonna pass it over to Ryan to add a few more um, points about the residential experience. Yeah, so we require all of our first year students to live on campus because we, through the years, we've noticed that students that live on campus are able to make better connections, they succeed more academically, and ultimately they stick around to their second year. Um, and one of the ways that we're able to really enhance that academic experience in the residential setting is through our residential academic programs or RAPs. Um, these are major specific programs um, that have an academic component that are directly that are located inside of your residence hall. Um, we have everything ranging from business to engineering honors, global engineering. Um, we have the Libby Arts Wrap for those interested in performing or visual arts. Um, we have the Baker Wrap for those passionate about the outdoors. We have the Communication Wrap, the Honors Wrap. Um, so no matter what your interest, there's probably a wrap that might fit it. Um, one of the really neat things too is you are able to take smaller classes inside of your residence hall through one of the wrap programs. Um, for me, I was a part of the Leeds Business Wrap my first year here at CU and was a program leader for them for my sophomore and junior year. Um, so during my first year, I was able to have a number of my major specific classes inside of my residence hall, literally right down the hall from my room. Um, along with that, we had in-house advising, professors held office hours inside the residence hall. And then in the evenings, we would have a number of professional development programs as well as social programs um, to make connections in the business world as well as with your um, neighbors in the residence hall. So along with that, we also have five living learning communities on campus. While not directly related to a major, it can just be something that you're passionate about or interested in and a way to live with like-minded people. So no matter what your interests are, no matter your major, there really are so many opportunities here at CU to enhance that residential experience and help you get the most out of it that you truly can. Awesome, thank you for sharing that, Ryan. 
Uh, so for us, you know, we want you to be able to, as I have mentioned, get involved in so many other areas beyond um, just your academic area of interest. And so clubs and organizations really are an avenue that many students are going to take to explore their passions and interests a little bit more deeply. And so um, we certainly want you to know that all of these different pockets and areas do exist. And I do want to send it back over to Ryan. You know, will you share a little bit more about your experience outside of the classroom as a student at CU Boulder? And I mentioned that when you were a student at CU Boulder. <laughs> Absolutely. And I think one of the things to keep in mind too is college is about so much more than the classroom experience. It's about learning in the classroom and then taking what you've learned and applying it to an internship and then taking the experience you get in the internship and bringing it back into the classroom. It's about that cycle of learning and you're able to do that in so many ways. Um, Boulder and Denver are an amazing place to get internships, volunteer programs, or just work if that's something you're interested in. During my time at CU, I interned at Denver International Airport as part of their IT department. Um, along with that, I've worked now for five years at the Denver Museum of Nature and Science down in Denver. Um, so there's so many opportunities to do things like that. You're also able to volunteer if you're passionate about that. Our Volunteer Resource Center offers so many opportunities for that. Um, and along with that, you can also work on campus. Um, we have a number of different opportunities for you on campus if that's something you're interested in. For me, I worked with our Office of Admissions for four years. I was a tour guide, um, which is a volunteer program through our team, as well as one of our interns. So no matter whether you want to get some professional experience here on campus or go somewhere else, um, we have so many different opportunities for you to do that here at CU. Awesome. Uh, so now to talk a little bit about Boulder. So you can see here on this slide, sorry, I felt like I just broke, broke up a little bit. Um, you can see here on the slide, this is just a look at um, kind of the surrounding areas. So you can see campus here as well as the amazing Rocky Mountains uh, and flat irons that are really in our backyard. You can see them at any point of campus. It is absolutely beautiful. Um, but just to touch on a few high level um, things here, you do have skiing about 30, uh, 30 to 45 minutes away at Eldora Mountain. That is more like our neighborhood mountain where you can just kind of go for the day. Some of those larger ski resorts are going to be about two hours away, the Vail, Breckenridge, Winter Park areas. Um, but we do have a student organization on campus that's called the Free Ride Club. And this uh, basically student organization, the whole goal of it is to get students to the mountains as much as they possibly can. So you certainly will have access to being able to do that. And that's also to say like, you don't have to want to ski to come to CU Boulder. That's certainly not something that's required in any way, but it is definitely, I think, um, potentially a big part of what students enjoy doing. You've got hiking that's less than two miles away from campus, a beautiful bike path that goes all throughout Boulder as well as throughout campus. So it is a very bikeable uh, university and city, an amazing rec center that is um, a very sustainable building, so much so that the cardio machines inside the building heat the outdoor pool that is shaped like a buffalo. And yes, there is an outdoor pool. It is awesome. You've got rock climbing. Um, there's a body of water as well near campus, just in case that's something that, you know, you're interested in doing some sort of water sports. And then fair and field, which is going to be a little bit of um, kind of your front yard or backyard as a first year student, as there are a lot of residence halls right around that area. And then I also like to point out the fact that this is our um, football field right here on campus. We are division one in our athletic sports and we are part of the Pac-12 conference. So at this time, I'm going to start to talk a little bit about the admission process. So um, we're going to transition into that time. And then again, please feel free to continue to use that Q&A section. So first step is going to be submitting an application. We do, um, we are a common application school. So the only place that you are able to apply is through the common application. There are um, a lot of really great, there's a lot of really great information we get off of this application, like your activities list uh, and so on. So certainly spend a good bit of time filling this out. We always like to share this with you. I think it definitely adds a little bit of transparency, but here you can see our middle 50% rangers for both GPA, SAT, ACT, as well as ranking. Uh, so very important to know the middle 50% means that there is 25% of students that fall above this and 25% of students that do fall below this. We're also going to talk about the application checklist. So what's required after you submit your application? What are the required documents as well as the application fee? 
So the first thing is that Common App, there is two essays that are required. Uh, one is going to be the Common Application Essay. You can choose from one of the eight prompts that are available. We don't care what prompt you choose, but really encourage you to write the best essay that you possibly can because this is an amazing opportunity for us to get to know who you are and really what you're hoping to get out of your college experience as well as the journey that you've gone on in your life. The other essay that's required is our CU Boulder uh, supplement. This basically says, you know, no two buffs are alike at University of Colorado, and we really want to understand what your unique identity is. Share that ident identity with us and help us understand, again, who you are a little bit deeper. These essays are 250 to 650 words. We don't care how long they are, as long as you certainly spend time uh, and give us an opportunity to get to know you through them. That's a super important part of the application. $50 application fee or $70 for international applicants. We do require that you send us transcripts from the high schools in which you have attended. Uh, we are accepting unofficial transcripts for this year. If we do have any sophomores or juniors on the call, I'm not quite sure what it will look like for next year. However, um, you all, always should certainly check back on our application website. We also ask if you've taken any like dual enrollment courses or college courses that you also send us your college transcript so that we can be aware of those classes that you've taken. SAT and ACT scores are optional for this year. Again, it is only for this year at this time. We certainly hope that moving forward, it will hopefully um, stay optional, but we don't quite know as of yet. Um, just a quick sidebar, uh, being that we are a public institution, this was actually a bill that had to be passed by the Colorado legislature for us to be able to go test optional. So um, with that being said, any, again, sophomores or juniors on the call, please um, make sure that you check back on our application website uh, for any updates that come with that when it's time for you to apply. Academic letter of recommendation. So this is a requirement as well. We do ask that you send us one that is the requirement. However, you are able to send more than one. I always find that that sweet spot is between two to four. Um, really my biggest piece of advice here is to not send eight because it's very unlikely we'll be able to read all of them. But definitely choose you know, a few teachers that you feel can really speak to who you are in the classroom and um, really kind of who you've been in your community as well. And then there is an optional resume or activities list that you could upload as well. Also keep in mind that on the common application, there is a section for you to fill out for the activities list. So you certainly can utilize that section as well. Now let's talk about deadlines. So we do have two deadline options. November 15th is our early action deadline. January 15th is our regular decision deadline. Uh, very important to keep in mind that these are received by deadlines, which means that we need to have all of your application materials in our hands by these dates. So I always tell students, knock off the five, put it in your head that it's November 1 and January 1, because then you will be ahead of the game. This is probably one of the most important slides that I'm gonna to touch on today, just in terms of the application process. So this is just giving you a look at our holistic review process. We do read our applications holistically, which means that we include all of the application materials that you send us in our review. Beginning here at the top, our primary consideration is going to be your academic uh, experience or potential thus far. So we are looking at your transcript. We're looking very closely at the courses that you've taken, the grades you've received in those classes, what, what was offered to you at your high school. So the difficulty of the courses that you took, um, of course, your grade trends. So, you know, how have you done over, you know, the course of your four years? Uh, did you maybe have a bad semester? That's okay. We understand, but we do want to see you looking to get that grade trend up in some way. So we are looking very closely at that transcript. Being that we are test optional, um, you know, if you do decide to submit an SAT or ACT score, we will also use those in consideration for the academic portion, so that primary consideration. Um, however, if your transcript, or excuse me, if you do not submit an SAT or ACT, that is totally fine, and we will just be looking very closely at your transcript to understand your academic experience uh, and potential. Definitely feel free to ask me additional questions on that, because I know that can be a little confusing and complicated, especially, um, you know, in this time. The secondary consideration is everything else. So we want to know, you know, any volunteer experiences you've had, the things you've done outside the classroom, leadership that you've had perhaps as well. Noting that leadership looks different in so many different ways. I had a conversation with a student who 
told me that she um, was part of a mentorship class. Like as part of her class, she was a mentor to a younger student and asked if that could be considered as leadership. And it absolutely can. So we really want to see you kind of dig deeper and find these experiences that you've had and tell us about them in your application so that we can understand who you've been, you know, in your high school experience. We're also looking for unique talents and backgrounds. And then of course, considering accentuating circumstances like COVID-19 as an example. So once you've submitted your application, you've submitted your required documents and paid your application fee, we then are going to um, ask that you make sure that you're checking your email, specifically the email that you've submitted your application with, because you will get access to an application status page that is super important because it is going to tell you your decision, but also it will link you to our scholarship portal as well. So a lot of just really great stuff is found right there for you um, all in one place. We also want you to be able to understand costs and um, additional funding as well. So looking here, this is our non-resident estimated cost of attendance. Looking at the total here, you have tuition and fees as well as on-campus room and board. So keeping in mind that at some point you are going to move off campus, which typically is after your first year. So that would um, be switched into basically, you know, whatever you would end up spending on an apartment rental or wherever you decide to live. We do guarantee that your tuition will stay the same over the course of four years. So that's something that we you know, really like to be able to say. Oftentimes, um, many universities, I believe, go up between 2% or higher. So we are guaranteeing that you know, this tuition will not increase over the course of your four years. Looking at important financial aid dates, um, it's kind of fun because today is October 1. So the FAFSA opened today, which is, I don't know, just a fun coincidence. But um, that is something that you will use to apply for financial aid at CU Boulder. Um, they do financial aid in our financial aid office. So they're a really amazing resource as well, kind of as you start to approach this portion of the application process. November 1st is when the scholarship application opens. The scholarship application is going to host um, basically all of our kind of like on-campus funds. It's like this big pot of money um, that different donors have donated um, for different academic programs have scholarship funds. So it really is just kind of um, from all over the campus area. So you'll have one application that you use and then it will tell you what you are um, qualified for in terms of scholarships. Oftentimes they're really specific. So sometimes it'll be um, you know, a student from Missouri interested in business, specifically in, I don't know, some area. So they, again, just get very specific in terms of offerings, but it's always good to apply for them just to see what you can qualify for. We also have our CU Boulder scholarship deadline. So keeping that in mind, February 15th is an important date. The sooner you get it in, the better. And then also um, additional deadlines for uh, March 13th. All right, so now um, that we've kind of talked about costs, we've talked about the application process, kind of gone through the whole thing, um, we want to mention, you know, being successful at CU Boulder. So your return on investment is so important. And the main thing is, like, are you going to get a job when you graduate? And so I am going to go ahead and pass this over to Ryan to share some of his professional development, you know, resources and opportunities that he took advantage of. Absolutely. So after your four years here at CU, our goal is to set you up for success, that you can go and get that dream job, um, or at least start working towards it. Um, and we do that starting your first year. Um, every single college school and program has a dedicated career advising office, whether it's a campus-wide office or certain colleges even have their own in-house. Um, these programs are here specifically to help you figure out what you want to do after graduation. They can help you prep for an interview, critique your resume, help you build your LinkedIn account. Um, there are so many different opportunities there. They can also help you find an internship or a job or get you in touch and get those connections started so that you can start to set up those internships for your junior or senior year. Um, so through this, there's so many opportunities and it's not just limited to one school. Every single college school and program on our campus has these opportunities available to them. Um, and our whole goal is to set you up for success, not just one, two, three years after graduation, but to really set you up for success for, your rest, for the rest of your life. Um, after you earn a degree from CU. Awesome, thank you, Ryan. And then here's just a really great look at, you know, our CU Boulder graduates, um, the fact that they do go on to be employed, 92% are employed within um, six months of graduation, which is really positive. And then also you can see students uh, going to grad school as well. 
And then here is a look at some of the really amazing companies um, that our students have gone to work uh, at. And so I will also pass this over to Ryan to chat a little bit about them. So no matter what you're interested in, no matter where your passions lie, we have over 360,000 forever buffs around the world that are really here to support you every step of the way. So whether you're interested in a for-profit company, nonprofit, government work, um, whatever it might be, we have opportunities out there for you. If you wanna join the Peace Corps, Teach for America after you graduate, or be like Zhao here in this um, slide and go work for Google. Um, there are so many different opportunities for you out there. And I mean, even on this list alone, I've interned with the city of Denver and I interned with Disney. Um, so if something's on this list that you're passionate about, that's awesome. We, will, we can help you get there. Um, but if, even if it's not, work with your career advisor, work with your academic advisors, and they can really help make those connections, set you up with a mentor, um, or just a connection at one of these companies to help you get um, these internships, or really help set you up to be really successful once you graduate to get that dream job. Thank you, Ryan. I feel like one of the best parts of this photo and this screen is the Patagonia uh, quarter zip that he got, which is awesome. I feel like that's probably a great per perk of working at Google. Anyway, um, you know, we always like to drive you to our social media. I think that they do an amazing job. So I always recommend following them. They give you updates on deadlines as well as anything else going on in our admission process and the views of CEO, which is also just beautiful. Uh, and then again, my email is available right here um, for, you know, any questions that you'll need. I am your admission rep. So I don't think I said that, but I am your admission counselor. So any questions you have just on the application process, on submitting your application, don't hesitate to reach out to me. We definitely have time for questions. So uh, please keep them coming in the question and answer portion of, um, of this. Uh, a webinar. And I will also say like if you have questions on kind of like student life or Boulder, Ryan has a really great perspective too. So I can definitely just kind of give some common FAQs that we get, but I would also recommend reaching out um, for any questions you have. A few that have come in so far. Um, so somebody did ask, are AP credits transferable? And they are. So if you have taken AP classes at uh, in your high school and you received, um, typically it's a three, four, or a five. I will say that fours and fives are most likely going to get you an actual class at CU Boulder, um, whereas three will give you more of like an elective credit. You are looking at potentially receiving some credit. So that happens on the far end of the process. So during the enrollment period is when you would then find out exactly what you would be receiving credit for and so on. We do also have um, basically a chart on our website. So I will recommend that y'all go directly to, um, oh gosh, what is it? I would just Google CU AP credits and it will come up. Um, I don't have the exact link in front of me right now, but that would be my recommendation for how to find them. Um, there was another question about the scholarship application for the College of Engineering and when does that close? Honestly, I do believe that they all close right around the same time. Ryan, do you know specifically? Okay, so yeah, they do perfect. close, okay, February 15th. Um, and again, you will have access to that through your application portal. So you don't have to worry about like missing that opportunity as long as you're checking your email. Like that's just so important and i know that y'all get bombarded and we understand but it is really important for you to be able to um be able to see the uh emails that we're sending you just for that information yeah one of the things we would recommend too is if you haven't already create a separate email account that's just for college applications um so no matter which schools you're applying to they all go to one separate email account share that with your parents family guardians um so that you can all keep track of it so that way it's separate um, the other nice thing too is we recommend don't use your high school email just because when you do lose access mm -hmm. to that, if you are getting communication through whichever school you end up going to, that could cause an issue. Um, so we recommend just set up a special account just for your college apps um, and that'll just help you stay more organized with all of it. Awesome. So there is a question on here that I will be very honest, I do not know the answer to and certainly wish that I did, but I think um, and I'll, I'll read the question. So do you guys have any information on how COVID-19 will affect study abroad programs in the next couple of years? I genuinely don't know. Um, I think that there is always the hope that, you know, hopefully in a few years we'll be in a better spot in terms of being able to have more opportunities to leave the country safely. Um, but I can tell you that 
what's really important to us at the university is making sure that our students are able to come to classes, be on campus, uh, and really be able to interact with one another safely as well. So I imagine that the safety of our students will remain a top priority no matter what. Um, and so I don't, Ryan, do you have anything else to add on that question? Um, last I heard, so at least for the semester, study abroad programs are suspended. Um, I think their hope is once the university deems it safe, right now there's a moratorium on travel for any students, staff, or faculty. Um, but once they do lift that, once things do start to get better, they're hopeful to resume those um, study abroad programs as soon as they find it safe to do so. Um, because they know it's for so many students, approximately 25% of our students do some sort of education abroad program at some point during their four years here at CU. So they know how big of a component to the college experience it is. Um, so their hope and goal is to get it back as soon as they can, as safely as possible. So there was a question, will classes be completely in person by fall of 2021? So um, again, that's a question that we really don't have an answer to at this time, just because I think everything is constantly changing and um, we're trying to, again, make sure that we can determine the safety of our students. What I will say though is right now, um, our students are currently, basically we came back for the fall to do more of a hybrid model. So both with remote, online and in-person learning uh, opportunities for our students. And so we were able to you know, successfully bring everyone back, um, at least having our first year students live on campus uh, and so on. So that is certainly something that you know, we feel is important, especially because of that experiential learning aspect that is such a huge part of many of our majors. Yeah, absolutely. And it, right now on campus, like for the hybrid model, for example, you might have a class that meets Monday, Wednesday, half the class comes on Monday, and then half the class comes on Wednesday. Um, from what I've heard, the majority of our students have at least one to two of their classes on campus a week, and then the majority are online. Um, the university's hope is, of course, if things get better, as long as they do, um, to continue to ramp that up, to go from 40% in person to 60% in person, and then hopefully up to 100 as soon as they can because they understand that the online model is just not the same. Um, having that in-person experience being in, in the classroom is just not the same as being on Zoom. And so their goal is to get as many students back on campus as safely as possible. Um, and that was one of the really neat things is that our students were able to come back this semester. And even though stuff is a little bit different, um, they still have that on-campus experience. Uh, so another question that came through is what percentage of students get scholarships? While I don't have that exact percentage off of the top of my head, what I can tell you is about our automatic consideration merit-based scholarships that are offered uh, at CU Boulder. So there are two that are offered for our out-of-state students specifically, one of which is going to be our Chancellor's Achievement Scholarship. That goes to the top 25% of our out-of-state admitted students. And then the presidential scholarship goes to the top one to 3% of our out of state admitted students. Um, in terms of scholarships, kind of beyond that, you know, we always recommend apply to as many as you possibly can um, in hopes to receive, um, you know, as much additional funding as you can. We've got two minutes left. Brian, is there anything else you want to add just in general about CU Boulder that we can share with students? Yeah, um, I think the one other question we have in here right now is what is the average financial aid package? Um, so basically, we can't really, it's that, that question's hard to answer. Everyone is different, um, and that's why we recommend you submit the FAFSA. Even if you don't think you're going to qualify, or even if you don't want to, um, we still recommend submit it. Um, if they do offer you something, you don't have to take it if you don't want it. Um, so it really varies for each student based on different income levels, jobs, experience. There's so many factors that go into the FAFSA that help us determine that financial aid package. Um, but if you do have more questions about that, if you go to colorado.edu forward slash financial aid, or you can email them at financial aid at colorado.edu, um, and they'll be able to really walk through more of an individualized plan of what you might be able to expect as well. Yeah. I think one of my favorite things about working for CU Boulder and really being part of the community is just the amount of resources that we have available. There is an entire financial aid office that are available to you for any questions you have about even how to submit the FAFSA. There's like a full video and website on just completing the FAFSA. So definitely check out that website. If you need help or, you know, basically like links sent to you, which is, I feel like I'm a pro at at this point, please shoot me an email. I'm so happy to kind of dig and, and help you find answers to questions that you have. 
I know there are a few on here that we may not have had an opportunity to get to. Um, we have one more minute left. I think the question here is, are scholarships way more competitive for out-of-state students? And basically, there are different scholarships for in-state students and out-of-state students. And the two that I mentioned are for our out-of-state students. So um, in a way, like I would say no, because you still have these two opportunities to receive these scholarships. But um, yeah, I, I guess thank you again for joining us this evening. We're super grateful um, and certainly hope that you enjoy the rest of your night and then have a great Friday tomorrow. Thanks, everyone. Thank you for joining us this evening. Um, when you exit this window, there will be a link to a very quick four question survey and we'd appreciate any feedback you can provide. Uh, remember, this is just one of many sessions being hosted. So be sure to sign up for additional sessions at moacac.org. And in about a week, you'll be able to find this session's recording as well as all of the other session recordings at moacac.org. Thank you, Heather, and thank you, Ryan. Thanks everybody, have a great night.